Sunday services, we have been looking at the subject engaging the power of praise for supernatural turnaround. We started that teaching part four from the first service. And this is part four C. Engaging the power of praise for supernatural turnaround, part four C. God can never be late. The Bible calls him the present help in time of need. Even though the month is gradually running to an end, but your turnaround is still possible. If you know what to do, you will always command the desired result. God will never do for you what you can do. God will only do for you what you cannot do. Whenever you do what you can, God will do what you can't. God will never do for you what you can do. God will only do for you what you cannot do. Whenever you do what you can, God will do what you can't. There is what to do to provoke your supernatural turnaround. Your problem is not the size of the challenge. It's not the size of the obstacle. It's you not knowing what to do. When you know what to do, the situation must listen to you. And what must you do to bring about your desired supernatural turn around? Praise. Praise. Oh God, we know not what to do. Our eyes are on you. And he told them what to do. Just appoint singers, trumpeters, and praise me. Hallelujah. Praise is what to do when you do not know what else to do. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verses 20 to 24. Praise is what to do. Whenever all road looks close, that is what to do. Whenever it looks as if nothing else can happen, that's what to do. Praise is what to do when you do not know what else to do. Sometimes you hear people say, I've done all that I know how to do. I don't know what else to do. This is what to do. This is what to do. It looks like a simple weapon, but yet very potent. Very powerful. It's not the size of a thing that determines the effectiveness of that thing. Praise the name of the Lord. No. It's not the size. It's not the size. You know the kind of phones we used to use those days. It's like radio. Praise the name of the Lord. Just big. And when technology came, they started reducing the size. Praise the name of the Lord. Reducing the size. So you see some things small, but very powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. Very powerful. Very powerful. You know the kind of computer they used to use before? As compared to what you have now, just a little tab, but yet what it can do is equivalent to what some big computers can do. So it's not the size. It's the power, the potency. Praise as simple as it is. It's a spiritual weapon that can bring about instant turnaround. What is in praise? Number one, God is in praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22 and verse 3. 
he inhabits the places of his people. Psalm 24, verses 7 to 9, verses 7 to 10. God's presence. God is in place. What is in place? Signs and wonders. Exodus 15, and verse 11. Who is like unto your God among all the gods? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Signs and wonders. What is in place? Fresh anointing. For fresh results. Whenever. If you are a praiser, you are never resort dry. There is always something new happening around you. New testimonies. The testimony of yesterday is good, but it's not good enough. You are qualified for a new one. And how do you get there? Praise. 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 Psalm 92, in verses 1 to 2, and verses 10 to 12. Fresh oil for fresh exploit. Psalm 92, verses 1 to 2, verses 10 to 12. Hallelujah. What is in place? Fulfillment of prophecy. Romans 4, 16 to 21. God promised Abraham and Sarah every factor was looking as if it would not be possible. But they were not weak in faith. They were strong in prayer, giving glory to God. And then their miracle arrived. Praise turns impossibilities to possibilities. Praise brings about the fulfillment of whatever God has said. Hallelujah. And this morning, before we go, we are still going to praise God. Because there are certain things that praise delivers instant time. What do we expect our praise to deliver for us this morning, number one? Praise will provoke healings and deliverances. Healings and deliverances. Healings and deliverances. All through scriptures, we saw the fact that if you live a lifestyle of praise, you can carry sickness. You can't praise God without joy. Joy is what leads to your praises, that gives value, that gives potency to our praises. In Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22, the Bible says, A merry heart dwell good like mercy, but a broken spirit dried the bones. When your spirit is broken, the bones will follow. So that is the root of genuine praise. Joy in the heart. And when you praise God with joyfulness of the heart, it will affect every area of your body. It has been proved that people who live their life in joy, they live longer. They live longer. Scientifically, it is said that you need fewer muscles to smile than to frown. You need less than 10 muscles to smile. When you are smiling, you are only engaging less than 10 muscles. But when you are frowning, you are engaging more than 40 muscles. So you weary yourself out unnecessarily. So for people who frown, you are not doing good to your health and to your system. No. No, apart from so many other things that it disconnects you from. You are not doing well to your health if you are always frowning. People who smile, who are joyful, you see them looking younger. Because they are, they are not over laboring their muscles. They are not overworking their body. Oh, you frown all the time. You can't smile. How will you now have malaria and pain and everything? Praise the name of the Lord. There are people who don't smile. Don't smile. No, nothing makes them smile. They just put their face like this thing and frown. And they say, bro, smile, smile a bit. You say, what is wrong? Nothing. Now so my face be. In our family, now so all of us be. And if they give you money now, you will change family. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You will change family instantly. I don't frown. 
Let me quickly check you. Check your neighbor for me whether it's funny. So that we know the kind of prayer to pray for him or her. Let me check your neighbor. If your neighbor is frowning. Is your neighbor still frowning if your neighbor is frowning? Just tell your neighbor to stand up if your neighbor is frowning. And stand on the chair. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So praises makes you to live in sound health. Most of the medical problems you see today, majority of it has the roots from one pain in the heart or the other. Started from that and then complications. Complications. Praise the name of the Lord. So praise provokes healings and deliverances. When you are talking about healing, you need to be sick before you talk about healing. There is what we call divine health and divine healing. Divine health is a state of soundness where you don't know sickness. Divine healing is recovery from sickness. So you don't even need to be sick. This is how to live a life of sound health. Sound health. Just live a life of joy. Live a life of joy. When you see our spiritual fathers, they are always excited. They are always excited, joyful, all the time. All the time. That's how they are bouncing. That's how they are, they are, they are, they are strong. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how they are strong. So live your life in joy. And then divine health will be guaranteed. And then in the midst of praises, healings, in Matthew chapter 21, you know the story. Jesus entered into Jerusalem and as he began to sing his Hosanna, he went right into the temple and began to, you know, chase out everyone that is buying and selling. Our bodies are the temple of God. Sickness comes to buy and sell. When we engage a lifestyle of praise and each time we are praising God, that thing can say that buying and selling must stop. The Holy Ghost takes over and begins to flush out those things. Flush out those things. That's why, in the midst of praises and dancing, certain things disappear. Tumor disappear. Growth disappear. Moving object stops. And that's what will happen this month. That amen is not loud enough. So, praise provoke healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 30 and verses 29 to 30. Whenever there is a song in your mouth, it ushers you to revelation. That revelation gives you access to a flow of virtue. A flow of virtue. A flow of virtue. A flow of virtue. Flow of virtue. All manners of sicknesses, deliverances as a result of grace. Praise is negotiating for your healing. That's what happened to Ezekiah. They brought him a message, you will die, it's over with you and all that. He said, for where? For where? Only the living can praise you. I know how to catch him. I know how to catch God. I know what he wants. When I give him what he wants, he will give me what I want. Isaiah, thank you for that message because Isaiah was a high voltage prophet. Every prophecy is dangerous. If you read from Isaiah, everything about him was woe, woe, woe unto you. Woe unto you, Roland. Chapter 2, chapter 3, woe unto you. Chapter 4, woe unto you, you people. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. After he went about woeing everybody, there was no any other person to say woe unto. He came to himself in chapter 6, woe unto me. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So every word of every prophecy of Isaiah was heavy. It doesn't fall to the ground. Immediately he came to Ezekiel. He said, ah, okay, no problem. I will settle my case. He turned to the, to the world and began to speak unto the Lord. You know, oh God, only the living can praise you. I've been serving you faithfully. Is this how you will reward me? If you take my life now, who will praise you? The way I'm praising you. Not everybody can dance the way I'm dancing when I'm praising you. See the way I spring. See the way I sing. Are you tired of saying that? Are you tired of receiving my praise? God said, I'm not tired. Fifteen more years. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise is negotiating your healing. As you begin to praise and dance, before you start praising today, you, you mean it in your heart. Lord, as I'm praising you now, will you leave me in sickness? Will you leave me in sickness? 
You are not a wicked God. You are dancing and praising God. Say, no way. No way. That sickness can't stay. Praise the name of the Lord. In the midst of praises, there are diverse healing and deliverances. There are certain things that are happening in your life now that you just know that it's not ordinary. It's demonic. 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 Every time you sleep, you dream all manners of evil. Evil. And the moment you dream, something is shattered. Something is shattered. Either you lose your pregnancy, either you lost your job, either you lose opportunity. The favors. You just know there is a circle of evil around you. Today, it must stop in the name of Jesus. In the midst of these places, there will be deliverances. There will be deliverances. There will be deliverances. You go to all manners of interview, you do so well. People even commend you. Oh, you did so well. You did brilliantly. No problem. We'll reach, we'll reach unto you. Don't, don't, there's nothing to bother. You'll get this job. They even promise you. They say all manners of things. You live there with joy. And the moment you turn back, they forget you. And that is the circle. Every good thing, they will always forget until after that they pass. And they'll say, oh, okay, were well, you the young man that came for that interview? Oh, well, okay, next time. Promotion pass you by. Everything just keep passing you because the devil keeps shifting your blessing. Enough is enough. Wherever they have tied down your destiny, you must be loose today in the name of Jesus. Deliverances, deliverances comes when we praise God. Hallelujah. In the midst of praise, God cleanses all our sicknesses and diseases. Praise is quickening up our mortal bodies. Quicken up, no matter how dead they are. Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus. And after he gave thanks to his father, immediately, Lazarus came back to life. Can you imagine, four days, somebody is dead. All the organs shut up. And then Jesus spoke, praised his father, and then spoke. And then there was quickly, the same spirit that quick, Quicken Jesus from the dead, went into action, began to quicken all the system, the kidney, the, the, the lungs, the digestive system, everywhere, the bones, the blood system, everywhere was quickened here and there. And Lazarus came back to life. I don't care what is dying in your body. I don't care the state of any organ in your body. That negative medical report, as we begin to praise God now, it shall be quickened in the name of Jesus. Number two, what do we expect? Our praise to do diverse signs, miracles, signs and wonders. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 to 24. As they began to sing, they saw what they have never seen before. I've told you that signs and wonders are the things that makes you to wonder. Right before your face, your enemies face themselves. Face themselves and they started killing themselves. And you are watching before your face like this. That's a wonder. Until all of them were dead. Just by reason of praises. By reason of praises. That's what will be happening today. As we are singing and dancing here and praising God. All those people that are gathering themselves in your place of work. Just trying to blackmail you. Just trying to plan against you without any just cause. God will use their head to hit their head. If that amen is louder, I'm sure the miracle will come to me. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders. Miracles. Miracles. Things that you have known that you can't think that can happen so quickly. As you praise God this morning, it will happen quicker than you think. I say it will happen quicker than you think. In the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 35, Paul and Silas were in the prison. They were just praising God. They have done all they knew how to do. They have prayed and prayed all manners of prayers. And at that moment, at that time, Silas was just a new convert. To start the Christian life that way, it was like, ah, why did I even give my life to Christ? Why? They have prayed and prayed. They were there not because they did anything wrong. They were just preaching the gospel. And then they prayed and nothing happened. And Paul said, I know the key. 
We are leaving this place. How we are going to live, I don't know. But I know we are leaving this place. I don't know what situation you are in now. It looks so impossible. It's overwhelming. You can't think how you are going to leave that state. You can't think how these challenges will be overcome. You can't just think, humanly speaking, it is overwhelming. Anyhow you think about it, it's so disturbing. It's so frustrating. Maybe that's your situation now. But the good news is this, you are living that situation. Oh, can I hear a louder amen? Can I hear a louder amen? They couldn't think how they were going to leave that place. But Paul said, don't worry, let's just think. It's not for us to think how we are going to live, live here. That's not our own. Let's obey him. Let's do what he asks us to do. Let's leave him to what he wants to do. And they started praising God. And God stepped in. Praise is what commands divine intervention. Divine intervention is God arriving in the midst of the affairs of men. Praise the name of the Lord. And God stepped in. And let the doors open on their own accord. You have struggled enough. Let God help you. Let God help you. You have struggled enough. You have tried to do it on your own. You have depended so much on your skill. Any skill that does not have the place of God will kill that person. You have depended so much on who you know. That's why you are not moving an inch. Well, no matter how long the leg of a man is, you say you have long leg. God has the longest leg. Heaven is his throne. The earth is his foot too. Praise the name of the Lord. Let God help you. They look unto him. Their faces were like him. They were not ashamed. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord. Let God help you. Stop carrying that problem. You can't carry it. It's too heavy. Transfer the battle to God. That's what you do when you praise him. You transfer your battles. And watch him perform. Fearful praises. Fearful praises. Provokes fearful wonders. Hallelujah. Number three. Praise infuses strength. Which is what empowers us for a life of exploit. Faith infuses strength. Which is what empowers us for a life of exploit. Praise. 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 No strength, no exploit. The challenges of this world, they are too numerous. No matter what you have, there are people who have better things than you. The challenges are much. It's enough. The obstacles, the, the presence of the obstacles, they are enough to weaken your faith. You need inner strength. For if thou faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. There will always be a day called a day of adversity when your faith will be challenged. And most of the times, when you are closest to your miracle, the battle is hottest when you are closest to victory. Hottest. Just when you are close to your testimony, all manners of challenges to weaken you, to make you turn. God was not going to you pass the children of Israel through the shorter cut. He said, "Lest when they see war, they will turn back. I will pass them through the longer route to train them because you cannot live this life victoriously without confronting challenges. A great and effectual door is open unto you. But there are many adversaries. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. That's why you need strength all the time. And strength is found in his presence. You need strength all the time. You need strength all the time. Oh, maybe somebody is seated there. These few weeks, there have been all manners of massive challenges. You are wondering, oh God, if this thing is getting too much more than me. Oh, the good news is that your testimony is just at the corner. I say your testimony is just at the corner. I told you several times in football, whenever you want to score a goal, just when the goal is mounting, the pressure will, will be getting high. Praise the name of the Lord. You see everybody under pressure. When a goal is about to be scored, the pressure is highest. Highest. Everybody is under tension. Players under tension. Referee under tension. Spectators under tension. Commentator under tension. Oh, he takes the ball. He moves to the right. Number five. Oh, he moves. They are trying to score. Oh, 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 oh
In the midst of that tension, anything can happen. Even the best player can make mistake. Praise the name of the Lord. When it is time for you to score a goal, God will make your enemies to make mistake. Yeah. Hallelujah. It was time for Esther to enter the palace. Vasti misbehave. They say the king who is your husband is calling you come and he said, No, I'm not coming. Ah, you are not coming, okay? Is the king? He said, Yes, I know. And so what? And so what? Another people went to meet her and said, Do you know what you are saying at all? Do you know the implication of what you are saying? You will be removed. They let him remove me. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Whenever it's time for you to get a job in a place, God will make that person in that position to misbehave. Because a seat must be created for you. Anyhow. Before the end of this month, somebody will get a job here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Very simple. He said, anything you want to let him do, anything you want to do, eh? they say, don't talk like that, let him hear. Let him hear now. And so what? Who, is, who does he think he is? Ah, he said, okay. Oh. And that's how she was removed. Hallelujah. You need strength of heart. Strength of heart. In order to do exploit in life. Strength of heart. Daniel 11.32 For they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. You need strength. You need strength. You need strength. You need strength. And strength can only be contacted in his presence. In Psalm 100 and verse 4. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. You can only get to the presence of God with praise. You can only get to his presence with praise. And it is until you get to his presence, you can't get strength. Psalm 84 and verse 7. They, and they go from strength to strength as many that appeared before God in Zion. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Appearance before God is what guarantees strength. And you cannot get access to his presence without praise. So praise grants you access. To his presence. In his presence, you go from strength to strength. And they that be strong, they are the ones that we see exploits. If David was not strong, the sight of Goliath alone will make him run back. What is this? He will run back. The whole nation was in hiding because of one man. Everybody went into hiding. Only one small David with a lion's heart. Come, who is this uncircumcised Philistines? Strength in heart. Strength in heart. Strength in heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Strength. Strength. You need to be strong in heart. I've told you the story. Many years ago, you know, as a small boy, we were in the class. There used to be somebody harassing the class. Anyhow, nobody could challenge him because we are under fear. We are under the yoke of fear. Nobody has the guts. He comes around and just move around, hit anybody's head. Look at your Bible and take your pen and say, what, what, what you want to say anything? No, sorry. He's just beating people for free. Praise the name of God. Nobody could challenge him. Just harassing people, intimidating people. When you, everybody sees he's coming, they'll just keep quiet. He can do and undo. When he's tired, the only way he exercises himself is by beating people and just, you know. And the thing was paining me. Paining me. We we'll all be looking. Then one day, I was thinking in myself, I said, this person, nobody has even challenged him. But it's possible for somebody to beat him. It's possible. It's only, it's only a game of chance. Is either you try, they beat you or... <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, life is risk, and it's risky not to take risk. So I was thinking and thinking and one day I started nursing that feeling. But one can even try. There is no harm in trying. There is no harm in trying. After all, he beat you, they break your mouth, you put iodine and then you go. I was thinking then one day something entered into my heart. I was ready for anything that day. I saw he stood up in the class and was harassing people and going around. I said, let this man come my way today. Let him just come this way today. My heart was strengthened. Something tells me that you can beat this person. You can beat this person. 
something can happen. And true to that, he just strolled around. He started from the person under my back. I sat down. I was waiting. So he came. I was concentrating in what I was doing, but ready for anything. Suddenly he pushed my head. So said, what is the problem with you? That's the first time he will be challenged. What, what is it? He was taken aback. See this small thing. Who is 18? And then I rose up. The whole class saw that for the first time. Everybody too stood up. Said, today is today. <laughs> Something is about to happen. So I stood up. As I stood up, he pushed me. I left my locker and balanced where, where there is space for two things to attack him or to run. Praise the Lord. And as I came out, he was still talking. I w Look, you have plenty of blood in your body today. Blah, blah, he was talking. I, I was calculating. And I could see the whole class, everybody too, was like, just waiting for something to happen. As he was coming to push me, I, I, I targeted his legs. I went down, picked his leg, he was on the ground. Immediately he got to the ground. All the class rushed, everybody was... All the reserve energy, all the people he has been beating for years, all the strength, they were beating him and all that. Told somebody, look for sound, look for sound, look for sound outside. They went and brought, put it in his mouth. And quickly, as I stood up, I went very far. Very far. So you, you think, next time, next time I was at the back. This time close to the door of the class, so no problem. Since that day, since that day, the thing changed. So intermittently, I will also rise up and be going around the class. Sometimes you may not have enough power, but have a strong heart. Praise the name of the Lord. The things you are afraid of, they are afraid of you. They only need a display of confidence. Praise the Lord. The devil is a dog. If you don't understand the nature of the devil, you will just be under his, his yoke. Who told you the dog, dogs are not afraid? They are afraid also. They are afraid. Dogs are afraid. Dogs are afraid. It's only your own psychology. The moment a dog is backing you, he wants to scare you away. The moment you run, ah, that's what gives him strength. He pursues you. But if a dog is barking, if you can only summon courage and walk towards that dog, even in your fear, yes. Oh! Oh! He's coming. Go! Oh! And you are still coming. You are still coming. Oh! He will move back again. You are still coming. You are still walking. Oh! 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 You are still coming. Ha! Inside of my head, this one is serious. It's serious. Oh! You see, come. And the moment you move next, like oh, oh, you see, you are not, uh, you move, like, hey. Praise the name of the Lord. You need strength of heart. Your testimony is sure, but all that you need is strength. That was the secret of David. He never lost any battle because he was a man of strong heart. Why? Because he was a praiser. Seven times he praises every day, three times he prays. From today, Receive an impartation of strength. Yeah. Receive an impartation of strength. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. From today, no challenge of life will scare you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The kind of testimonies you have never received before, you will receive it before this year is over. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Just before we rise up to pray in this miracle, before we pray in this miracle pray session, somebody is here, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Give me this opportunity. I will pray a very simple prayer with you. You will be born again. Jesus will come into your life and then your praises will be accepted to God. Any praise 
that is done outside salvation is a noise in the ears of God. In Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 19, the living, only the living can praise him. It's only the living that can give God acceptable praise. The living. Only the living. Only the living. The living is anyone who is alive in the spirit who has given his life to Jesus. Who have Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. So wherever you are seated this morning, you are not born again, you have not given your life to Jesus, give me this opportunity. Very briefly, I will pray with you. you born again, Jesus will come into your life. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus before, but you backslid it. You can return to him today. Just like that prodigal son, his hands are wide open. No matter how far you have gone, he's ready to receive you. I'm sure somebody is saying yes to Jesus this morning. Wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus now, quickly. You are in any of these two categories. I'd like you to rise up now, quickly, quickly, before we enter into a time of testimonies, a time of miracle praise. God bless you. Rise up, rise up, wherever you are. Rise up. Forget about who is looking at you. This is your day of salvation. Rise up. You are rising up quickly. Come forward. All those around them, please help me direct them. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. I tell you something, you don't know the plan of the devil. There are people that the devil has marked for death. Maybe the last time you narrowly escape. You narrowly escape. Don't tempt God anymore. Wherever you are, come quickly. God bless you. Let me clap for them. They are coming. Wherever you are, rise up, rise up, rise up. Start coming, start coming, start coming, start coming. Somebody is seated here. He's still thinking, should I go? Should I not go? Rise up now, rise up now, rise up now. Oh, Satan is telling you, you will do it another day. That's the devil. He knows the testimony that is already waiting. He wants to postpone that miracle. He wants to postpone that blessing. Wherever you are, come quickly. There are still five, six, seven people looking at me now. Your spirit is in front, but your body is still sitting there. Rise up now, quickly. Rise up now, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Help me clap for them. They are coming. They are coming. I'm waiting for the last six persons. Wherever you are, rush right now. Rush right now. Come quickly. Come quickly. As we get set to praise God now. Come quickly. Come quickly. Wherever you are. Wherever you are, right up. Start coming. Start coming. Start coming. Keep clapping for them. Somebody's fighting in the spirit. Should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? Should I not go? Rise up. Come quickly now. Are you clapping for them? Five more persons. Choir, please get on the instrument. Come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. Congratulations, all those in front. I'm so, so glad for this step you have taken. Every one of us took this step one day. We took this step one day and our lives never remain the same. The same way, your life will never remain the same. Bow your head. Put your right hand on your chest. Say this words after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I recognize I'm a sinner. You died for me. Jesus, come into my heart today. I believe you in my heart and I confess you with my mouth. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. Now I know I am born again. From today, I will serve you. I will never draw back in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I put a seal upon these your precious people. None of them shall draw back. In the name of Jesus, from this day, they will keep serving you. In Jesus' mighty name. No one will rush you to the hospital this week. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. The God of this commission goes with you. The God of Bishop Eric goes with you. Your head will not be bowed down this week. Go in peace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen nor ear how shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. Shiloh 2018. Dominion.